This warehouse is part of the new home of charity foundation and cultural platform Isolatsia. The group was previously based in Donetsk in East Ukraine, but had to move here to a shipyard in the Ukrainian capital Kiev when its premises was seized in June last year by Russian-backed militants. The collective is now preparing to head back to East Ukraine, not to its former home, Donetsk, but to Mariupol, a government-controlled city on the front line of the fight against the militants. The trip comes as part of the Architecture Ukraine residency program. One of the initiative's curators is Chris Ernstsens. I asked him to explain in a little more detail what the project is trying to achieve. We're interested in how do you live in cities like Mariupol, for example, which is very close to the borderline and where you have these two different parts of society trying to live together. So by digital interventions, we would... What are these different parts of society? You mean the Ukrainian government-controlled areas yes. and the areas controlled by Russian-backed Yes, Russian and I think there's parts of the society that are trapped in between, no? And we are very interested in how to build the bridges across the two parts of these societies, and we believe that there are digital ways and physical ways how we can achieve that in the city, in the urban context. Indeed, the project's aims are lofty, but if anyone can achieve them, it's likely to be the international multidisciplinary team Isolation has assembled. Among the members is Fulko Treffers, a Dutch architect and urban researcher. He says his previous experience in post-war Yugoslavia gave him an understanding of the mentality of people living amid conflict. It's a state of mind, he says, that he wants to feel again. People make urgent decisions in a, in a very pure and urgent way uh, about immigrating, uh, uh, leaving their families, or just staying there and uh, fighting back, or whatever kind of it is. And I, once in a while I need that, uh, to have, feel that urgency for myself, but I also learn from people who are in a situation like that. And I thought maybe in the Ukraine at this moment um, I could feel that again and uh, Ukrainian people I meet the next eight weeks will teach me more about that. Yeah. And on the, on the other hand I can maybe uh, do something back in showing my way of working uh, uh, to, the, to the public here. Another member of the team is architect Svetlana Demchenko. Having been born in Ukraine, the conflict in the country's east hits for her perhaps a little closer to home. I ask if, for you, as uh, someone born in this country, mm -hmm. uh, is taking part in this project, mm -hmm. uh, given the uh, difficult situation that we find ourselves mm -hmm. in uh, here in Ukraine, um, does it have special meaning for you? Is that why you came back to do it? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I would say that that's the main reason why I was interested in the program. I, I think it was another country and similar sort of agenda, I probably wouldn't be um, as interested or as invested in it. Um, uh, yeah, you follow the news, uh, it touches you very deeply, you want to help. Svetlana describes her understanding of the conflict in terms of a series of closely linked divisions. It's a reading of events which will no doubt influence her work in Mariupol. I think the map of Ukraine is really it's, it's wrong to say that division is only that between the East and the West. The relative situation is that you have these lines that uh, divide Ukraine on many different uh, fronts. So actually the way I would see Ukraine is actually multiplicity of these fault lines. And when they kind of start to overlap, as they did, did in the East, where you have kind of a religious, cultural, you have industrial, sort of these shifts that are more prominent and that's, I think, why what happened in East was able to sort of happen in that location. But I don't think the division is only there. The division is really within many sort of parts of the Ukraine. But I'm saying that it's just stronger in that location. And that is what we're kind of experiencing and dealing with right now. For the residency program, the trip to Mariupol, the first of several, is just the beginning. Throughout the course of the coming year, they'll be formulating their projects and proposals, all of which will contribute to a final exhibition, the exact form of which will only reveal itself closer to the time. So an international team here taking part in the Ukraine Architecture Residency Programme. They'll be going to East Ukraine now, to the city of Mariupol, which is on the front line of the conflict with Russian-backed insurgents. They'll be looking to finish their fieldwork with a view to architectural projects which can help the country at this difficult time. 
Stay with us on Ukraine Today in the coming weeks and months. We'll be following their progress.